Today on Public Eye News, the Kinross Township Volunteer Fire Department is at risk of losing ownership of their fire hall. And later, the latest on the DTE Gas Company rate increases to hit the Upper Peninsula. Coming up, Aubrey Huddleston will have your weekend weather forecast. Stick around because I'll bring you your Wildcat Sports Weekend Preview. I'm Andy Jordan. And I'm Liam You'll Enjoy. You're watching Public Eye News. Michigan State Police sources announced the arrest of a Sault Ste. Marie woman this week. 46-year-old Kimberly Backus was taken into custody after allegedly entering a Pickford Township home without permission. On November 6th, she was also arraigned for domestic violence after allegedly assaulting the homeowner, an ex-acquaintance of hers. Backus was lodged in the Chippewa County Jail, but has since paid her $500 bond. She is due back in court on the 18th of this month. And the Kinross County Volunteer Fire Department is in dire straits after a ballot measure seeking funding was rejected by local voters. The proposal would have put up $3.75 million in bonds to fund a new fire hall. However, it was rejected by voters in the November 5th local elections. Now the Kinross VFD lacks the money for a new headquarters. That's made worse by the existing challenge of an expiring lease on their current one. The department said in a recent statement that they will not be certain of their response capabilities once the lease expires. Locals with questions have been advised to attend the department's open meetings every first Wednesday of the month at the fire hall. The Kenross Township Fire Chief did not respond to Public Eye News' request for comment. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services awarded a record number of 312 schools Michigan Heart Safe designation during the 2023-24 school year. To receive a Michigan Heart Safe designation, schools must meet certain guidelines set by the MDHHS. The UP schools receiving this award include the districts of Whitefish Township, uh, Rudyard, North Dickinson County, Iron Mountain, and Lance Area Schools. Lance Area Schools is one of 158 across the state to be a first-time recipient of the award, with 761 to schools total actively designated as Michigan Heart Safe. These schools are designated as Michigan Heart Safe for the years of 2023 to 2026. And as Michigan hunters prepare for the upcoming firearm deer season, Michigan's Department of Natural Resources is reminding hunters to respect the five-day quiet period from November 10th to November 14th. During this period, it is unlawful for hunters to transport or possess a rifle or shotgun in an area with a heavy deer population. Small game or waterfowl hunters may still carry shotguns with shot shells, but cannot possess buckshots, slugs, ball loads, or cut shells. Fur harvesters may carry a 22 caliber or smaller rimfire firearm while actively hunting or checking trap lines. Unloaded firearms securely encased in or in the trunk of a vehicle can be transported to and from hunting camps. And November is Alzheimer's Awareness Month. Now a facility is offering memory care, a memory care unit residents a unique way to create connections and experiences with their families. Dr. John LaPook has more from New York. Take a look. Here we go. Judith Lasker always loved taking long car rides. What do you want me to do? Make a right. The 86-year-old who suffers from dementia is out for a spin with her daughter Jennifer. Look at this house. Ooh, Mom, there's nice water over here. This is the immersion room at Gerwin Jewish Nursing and Rehabilitation in Comac, New York. Designed by Besser Rooms, it uses state-of-the-art technology to immerse memory care unit patients and their families in experiences and activities through stimulating sights, sounds, even smells. There's an innocence to the reaction to some of the environments that are magical. And, you know, the last couple years were not magical. So it was a nice escape for both of us. From being whisked away to the beach, to visiting a quaint cafe, big inhale, arms come up, palms together, to practicing yoga. And she was following along like perfectly, and it's amazing. Recreational therapist Kathleen Biggs says the goal is to reduce combative behaviors, anxiousness, and restlessness, provide enrichment, and increase quality of life. 
Even though when they have memory loss, you still want to make the memories that they have meaningful. So we're providing these opportunities for families to have a whole new experience. It's bringing new memories to them. The experience can be overstimulating, so residents come out to this calming room to decompress. We're talking about what's happening in the moment, and you don't get that a lot of the time. My mom has done some of the sequences so many times that she actually remembers them. Jennifer says it's been wonderful to engage in experiences together once again. Dr. John LaPook, CBS News. Now don't touch that dial. After this short break, Aubrey Huddleston will have your public eye weather report. You won't want to miss it. Coming up this week on High School Bowl, we have one match, but it is a match for the ages because it matches two of our original epic teams. Hi, I'm Jim Kosky. Coming up this week on High School Bowl, the one match that we give you about Marquette versus Houghton. It's a clash of the titans coming up this weekend on High School Bowl. Welcome back. I'm Aubrey Huddleston, and this is your weather report. Now, taking a look behind me at the roof cam, you'll see that there are hardly any clouds in the sky, and overall, it is a beautiful day to get outside. And we're not the only ones lucky enough to be experiencing the sunny weather. Starting in Houghton, it is 46 degrees, in Ironwood, 47, down in Iron Mountain, it is 50 degrees, and in Menominee, it is 55. And looking over to the eastern side of the UP, in Escanaba, it is 51 degrees and sunny. In Manistique, there's some partial cloud cover with a temperature of 50. And then in Sault Ste. Marie, it is 47 degrees and sunny. And in our lovely Marquette, it is also 47 degrees and sunny. We have winds coming out of the north-northwest at 16 miles per hour with a barometric pressure of 30.27 inches and rising. And tonight, you can expect clear skies with a low of 41 degrees, winds out of the north-northwest at 7 miles per hour with a moon phase of a waxing crescent. And looking ahead into tomorrow, the cloud cover does return. However, there is a high of 51, a low of 43 degrees with winds out of the south-southwest at 14 miles per hour. And taking a look into the weekend and next week, you can expect some rain on Sunday with a high of 47 and a low of 43. And then on Monday, there will be some windy conditions with a high of 47 and a low of 34. However, on Tuesday, our sunny skies do return with a high of 44 and a low of 38. And that's all I have for you today. Back to the news desk. Thanks for that weather update, Aubrey. Let's all get out and enjoy those summery conditions while they last. But now it's time for some more news, starting with this. The U.S. Army National Guard has begun instituting anti-PFAS measures in Camp Grayling Joint Maneuver Training Center. This includes the installation of stormwater treatment chambers. They're intended to remove PFAS before they reach Lake Margaret. Outfall 3 into the lake will be filtered by two underground concrete vaults. Outfall 4 will be protected by two of its own treatment chambers as well. Lieutenant Colonel C.J. Mosley of the ARNG said the Guard is, quote, committed to promptly addressing its PFAS releases, end quote. This goes along with the ARNG's stated policy of timely action. The next meeting of the Restoration Advisory Board, which is reviewing progress on the stormwater system, will be on Tuesday, November 12th. And the natural gas company DTE Energy is slated to raise rates statewide this year. DTE serves over 1.3 million customers across the lower and upper peninsulas. This comes after the Michigan Public Services Commission approved a request for a $113 million increase. The MPSC did not acquiesce to the Energy Corporation's full request, which called for $266 million in total. According to Michigan.gov, an average residential customer using 100 cubic feet of natural gas a month will experience a jump of $1.98. DTE originally filed the increased request in January of this year. They serve UP areas like the Sault Ste. Marie region. And President Joe Biden gave his first address to the nation since his vice president's loss to former political rival, President-elect Donald Trump. As his upcoming administration starts to come together, CBS News' Jared Hill has more from Washington. We accept the choice the country made. In his first public remarks since Election Day, President Joe Biden assured Americans that there will be a peaceful transfer of power as his party grapples with major election losses. A defeat does not mean we are defeated. We're going to be okay, but we need to stay engaged. We need to keep going. Democrats searching for answers have started pointing fingers. 
Massachusetts Senator Seth Moulton blamed Biden for dropping out of the race too late. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders told the New York Times the party focused too much on identity politics. Our party is going to have some hard conversations in the coming weeks and months. Meanwhile, President-elect Trump's policy agenda as well as administration are starting to take shape as he looks to take office with a GOP-controlled Senate and possibly a Republican House. America has given us an unprecedented and powerful mandate. On his agenda, extending 2017 tax cuts, deregulation across federal agencies, and sweeping tariffs on imported goods. Trump's longtime aide, Stephen Miller, is leading talks on how to use executive orders to execute Trump's plan to deport more than 11 million undocumented immigrants. And yesterday, Trump announced a historic pick to a key White House post. Campaign manager Susie Wiles will serve as chief of staff, making her the first woman to ever hold a position. Jared Hill, CBS News, Washington. President Biden still has over 70 days left in office. White House officials say he plans to use his time to push hurricane disaster relief. Now let's head over to Andy with your Public Eye Sports Report. Welcome back. I'm your host, Andy Jordan, and I'll be taking you through our weekend sports report. Starting things off on the pitch, NMU women's soccer took on Grand Valley State last night. The Wildcats found themselves down one to nothing with just over seven minutes left when senior Maria Storm found the back of the net after a pass from junior Kenna Alexander. The Wildcats held their ground for the rest of the game, keeping it at a tie. NMU now sits at first in the GLIAC with a record of 11 and three and three overall as they look to take on number three Saginaw Valley State tomorrow at noon. And bouncing thing things over to the hardwood, NMU men's basketball begins their season on the road as they take on Maryville at the Justa Games Fieldhouse in the Wisconsin Dells. Tip-off is set for 8 p.m. tonight. NMU head coach Mac Makerzak has high hopes for this season. Makerzak is the reigning GLIAC coach of the year, and in his past two seasons, NMU has gone an astounding 47 and 17, or and 19. Last year, the Wildcats won the GLIAC regular season title for the first time since the year 1992, and the year before, Northern captured its first GLIAC tournament since 2000. And keeping things at the Barry, NMU Hockey hosts Lake Superior State this Friday and Saturday, opening the Capo Cup Series. The Capo Cup marks a historic rivalry between the two teams, being awarded to whichever team wins the series. The Cats look to regain the, regain the cup after splitting the series last year and losing on a 17-13 goal differential. The Wildcats are 8-4 against the Lakers and hold a 4-2 home record against them in the past 12 games. Puck drop is set for 7.07 tonight and 6.07 on Saturday night. And that is all I have for your sports report, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Celebrating 50 years of Austin City Limits with Winona. And it's making me weak. So I'll go home, home and I'll cry myself to sleep. Saturday night at 11, WNMU TV. Welcome back to the desk, Andy. Thank you for that sports report. But I've got one more story for us today, and it's this. The Boniface Arts Center in Escanaba has premiered the 31st annual Northern Exposure Art Competition. Artists in the Upper Peninsula have submitted their works, which will be on display through December 28th. A reception will be held tonight from 6 to 8 p.m. I have to say, I'm looking forward to that uh, reception. Unfortunately, I can't go. This is one of those times when I wish my Fridays were less busy, but I'm excited about the fact that we have these kinds of arts and cultural events in the UP. Right, that is super exciting to me. And you know what else is happening? That awesome Capo Cup rivalry game. I know, isn't that exciting? It is. But that's all the time we have left today at Public Eye News. I'm Liam Enjoy. I'm Andy Jordan. And we'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television, in studios located in Elizabeth and Edgar Hardin Hall.